This asthma presentation is based on the standard material produced by the Unified Referral and Intake System. It is intended to provide general information about asthma to community programs such as schools, childcare facilities, and agencies providing respite. After viewing this presentation, you will know what asthma is, be familiar with common triggers, know the symptoms of asthma, understand that avoidance is important in managing asthma, know what medication and devices are used to treat asthma, yes. and how to respond to an asthma episode. Asthma is a chronic inflammatory condition where the airways are hyper-responsive to environmental factors called triggers. When the airways are exposed to triggers, inflammation, swelling, and mucus production may increase and the muscles around the airway tighten. The end result is airway narrowing. Asthma can vary from mild to severe. Symptoms of asthma include coughing, wheezing, which sounds like whistling from the chest when the child breathes out, chest tightness, shortness of breath, and an increase in the rate of breathing while at rest. Symptoms of asthma can vary from person to person and from time to time. Asthma can be worsened by a number of environmental factors that are described as triggers. Inflammatory triggers cause the inside of the airway to become swollen and produce extra mucus. Common inflammatory triggers are respiratory infections, such as a cold or flu, environmental tobacco smoke, and allergens, such as animal dander, dust mites, molds, and pollens. Symptom triggers cause the muscles around swollen airways to tighten. Common symptom triggers are cold, dry air, smoke, exercise, rapid breathing from exercise, laughing or crying, strong odors such as paint fumes, perfumes or cleaning products, air pollution and stress. A combination of triggers such as exercising in cold, dry air or exposing a child with a cold to secondhand smoke may more rapidly induce asthma symptoms. Avoiding triggers is an important strategy in preventing asthma symptoms and may reduce the need for medication. It is important to help reduce a child's exposure to their triggers whenever possible. Check the child's health care plan for their common triggers. The following strategies are some ways to reduce a child's exposure to triggers. Avoidance strategy should be relevant to the child's triggers and the community program setting. Paint and varnish when children are not present in the facility. Keep windows closed during pollen and mold seasons. Restrict pets with fur, hair or feathers in the community program. Clean equipment such as gym mats, chalkboards and bookshelves regularly to avoid accumulation of dust. Avoid wearing perfume or other strongly scented products. Choose cleaning solutions that do not have a strong odor. Medication is used to prevent or decrease asthma symptoms. It is usually given by inhalation, which delivers medication directly to the lungs. There are two types of asthma medication, controllers and relievers. Controllers are also known as preventers. They control asthma by reducing airway swelling and mucus production. They are used to prevent or decrease asthma symptoms. They do not provide quick relief of asthma symptoms. They are used on a regular basis and most often taken at home. Relievers are also called bronchodilators. They provide fast temporary relief from asthma symptoms by relaxing airway muscles. The child should carry their reliever medication with them so it is available when needed. Reliever medications can often be identified by the blue coloring on the cap or bottom. Reliever medications most commonly used include Ventolin or Salbutamol. They may also be used to prevent exercise-induced asthma. 
The most common device used for asthma medication is the meter dose inhaler. Spacer devices such as the aero chamber or aero chamber with mask are usually recommended for all age groups when medication is being given with a meter dose inhaler. Asthma can be effectively controlled in most people. A person with well-controlled asthma can participate in all activities. However, asthma is not controlled when asthma symptoms prevent the child from performing normal activities such as recess or gym. The child is frequently coughing, short of breath or wheezing. The child requires their reliever medication more than three times per week for asthma symptoms. If you see any of these situations, inform the child's parent or guardian. When a child is having an asthma episode, remove them from any triggers of asthma if possible. Have the child sit down. Ensure the child takes their reliever medication. They should have their reliever medication easily accessible at all times. If the medication is not with the child, send another person for it not the child who is experiencing the asthma episode. If their reliever medication is not available, contact their parent or guardian. Do not leave the child alone. Provide assistance if the child is unable to take the medication on their own. Encourage slow, deep breathing. Monitor the child for improvement of asthma symptoms. Relief from asthma symptoms should occur within minutes of taking their reliever medication. If reliever medication has been given and asthma symptoms do not improve in five to 10 minutes, contact the parent or guardian. Reliever medication can be repeated once at this time. If the child is not well enough to remain at the community program, the parent or guardian should come and pick them up. Most asthma episodes do not lead to a medical emergency. However, the following situations are emergent. Skin pulling in under the ribs, skin being sucked in at the ribs or throat. The child has a grayish or bluish color in their lips and nail beds. They cannot speak in full sentences. Their shoulders are held high or neck muscles are tight. They cannot stop coughing or they have difficulty walking. If any of these situations occur, call 911. Continue to give reliever medication as prescribed every five minutes. Contact the child's parent or guardian. Stay with the child until EMS personnel arrive. It is important for community program personnel to know which children in their facility have asthma, as well as what their triggers are and the location of their reliever medication. This information can be found in the child's asthma healthcare plan, which is located at your community program. If you do not already know this child specific information or where to access their healthcare plan, talk to your administrator. The following video provides a demonstration on how to assist a child in using a meter dose inhaler. Shake the inhaler and remove its cap. Have the child breathe out as completely as possible. Bring the inhaler to the child's mouth, placing the mouthpiece between the teeth with lips closed around it. Push down once on the canister as the child breathes in through their mouth, slowly and deeply. Have the child hold their breath for 10 seconds or as long as comfortable, and then breathe out. If a second dose is prescribed, Repeat these steps after 30 seconds. Shake the inhaler and remove its cap. Insert the mouthpiece of the inhaler into the arrow chamber. Place the mouthpiece of the arrow chamber into the child's mouth, making sure there is a tight seal. Have the child breathe out. Push down once on the canister. Have the child breathe normally, taking five to six breaths. If a second dose is prescribed, repeat these steps, waiting 30 seconds between each dose. Shake the inhaler and remove its cap. Insert the mouthpiece of the inhaler into the arrow chamber. 
Apply the arrow chamber so there are no leaks between the child's face and the mask. Have the child breathe out. Push down once on the canister. Have the child breathe normally, taking five to six breaths. If a second dose is prescribed, repeat these steps, waiting 30 seconds between each dose.